I want you to open up your Bibles with me, please, to the book of Revelation, the end book, chapter 5, and beginning with verse 8 of this chapter, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 8. Let's stand for the reading of God's Word. We're going to read down to verse 10. And when he had taken the book, that's Jesus took the book, the four beasts, that's the living creatures and the four and twenty elders, fell before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of the odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nations and hast made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. I want to use for a subject, verse 9 says, and they sung a new song. I want to talk to you about we have a new song. Maybe may be seated. I, uh, I mentioned Sunday night that I was going to share a new song with you. Well, this is it, a new song. I don't sing my songs. I preach my songs. You say, why? Well, if you knew my voice, you'd know why. But it's a beautiful thing when you think about God loves, now listen to me carefully, God loves to be sung to and he loves to be sung about. And God is worthy to be sung to and he's worthy to be sung about. We come and we worship God and we magnify God and we glorify God because he's worthy. And there's a lot of unworthy things in the world today, but Jesus Christ is worthy. He's worthy of our time. He's worthy of our adoration. He's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of everything that we could possibly surrender to him. And so I'm going to share with you a a new song. And this song is sung in heaven. But you must learn it on planet Earth. You must understand that he was slain, Jesus was slain. He, was, he bled and died on the cross, he redeemed us. And only the redeemed of the Lord with a, pl- a few plus angels and living creatures will join in on the song. But the redeemed are the ones that are singing this song. Others, angels and, and living creatures and, and um, the many myriads of what God has created joins in this great song and sings unto the Lord. I, uh, I am always thankful for the fact that I'm living on the threshold of the coming of Christ. There's nothing more exciting than going to bed at night knowing that you might just be taken up into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air before the, day, the next day comes. In fact, I've been in some church service. I wish the Lord would come during them. <laughs> Amen. When I first got saved... I would, uh, I, and I was working a job where you took the time clock and you, you know, you took the time card and you put it in and click and it tells the time you showed up and, and all that and you had to do it at, at, at lunch and you had to do it when you clocked back in and breaks and they usually paid you for the breaks. Barbara probably knows something about that little time clock. And uh, I would always, every early Monday morning as a new convert in Christ before I started preaching, I just got saved and I heard about the coming of the Lord. I would walk up to that time clock, about to clock in for a busy, hard day's work, and I'd say, please, Jesus, please, just come right now. (laughs) Come on, I'm going to give you another chance, the Lord. Just another moment. It won't take long. Hit me, Jesus, before I punch this card. Well, one of these days, he will hit us, and I mean he'll take us up to be with the Lord, amen. I plan on hanging around until the Lord shows up. I really do. I had a dream the other night, and I dreamed when I, and it seemed so real. Uh, I was still pastoring this church, but the, the building was 
huge. I mean, it was a large auditorium, but it was the same church. And I was old. I mean, I was so old that I could barely get up on the platform. I was so old. And the place was full, and, and Josh had been singing, and I was just as old as I could be. And, and, and I even felt old in the dream. And, uh, and, and I, I had forgotten, we had a service, and I had forgotten that I had already preached. And so I'm going to preach again. I, I just forgot that I had already preached. I'd already took, the, we'd already sung, we'd already worshiped God. There'd been some preliminaries taking place. We'd already went through all the service. It was time to go home, but I forgot that it was time to go home. And I walked up to the pulpit <laughs> and I started to preach again. But I told him first, let's sing a song before I preach. And everybody's looking at each other like, this guy has lost it, and I had lost it. At least in my dream, I'd lost it. And Josh was a little put out with me because we'd already had the service and he, did, he wasn't prepared to sing another song because he, he wasn't prepared to have another service. And just in a flash, I was rescued when I awoke. And I woke up and I was rescued. So you better hope that I don't forget that I preach tonight. <laughs> and I give you a double dose of preaching tonight. Yep, got one guy on the back there. If he wasn't so big, you'd whip him before he got out of this room. I love Chuck. I love the song he sung. But I want to point out that we are on the threshold of the coming of Jesus Christ. And you will, if you're a Christian, be singing this song that I'm preaching. This song about Jesus is worthy. This is a new song, it says in verse nine, thou art worthy to take the book. Thou art worthy to take the book. The highest note of this song is thou art worthy. That's the highest cheer, that's the highest celebration in this song is thou, Jesus, you are worthy. Amen. Now, I got tickled with my little grandson, Stetson, and he was, uh, he was, we were eating, and he's just a little bitty guy, and um, I don't know how old is he, going on two, Cody? And he was, he was eating some chicken strips, and, and all of a sudden, he took his straw, and he held it up and said, you're not worthy. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what? I just wanted a bite of your chicken strip. I got tickled with him. He said, you're not worthy. And I said, son, I am worthy. He had his little ice cream, you're not worthy. And here I am drooling, wanting a bite of his ice cream. You're not worthy. I got tickled with him a while ago. I was going to get his lollipop. Somebody gave him a sucker that I guess Dave had. And he had to, and I said, give me that. Give me that sucker. And I said, what's the matter? I'm not worthy to have your sucker. Your lollipop? He said, you're not worthy. <laughs> well, the truth is none of us is worthy. Amen? But Jesus is, praise God. And I'll say this, that little fella that just two, less than two-year-old, he's worthy of a whole lot more things than any of us in this room is. I can tell you that for sure. You say, why? Because he ain't lived long enough to mess up his life yet. Amen? But the redeemed of the Lord, and I plan on going to the other side by the power and by the grace of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I plan on going to heaven because Jesus made plans for me to go there. And I'm, I'm hitching up with Jesus. I'm hooking up with Jesus, and I'm going to go. And when we get there, they're going to have a discussion. And the discussion will be in heaven at the first part of this chapter 5. They will search through the heavens. They will search upon the earth, they will look under the earth, they will look everywhere to find someone worthy to open up a seven seal book. And that seven seal book, once it is opened, God's judgment begins to be poured out upon the earth 
And once that book is open, that seven seal book is open, then begins the, the avalanche of God's judgment and the, and the church will be there with Christ. And they, they begin to search and they said, who is worthy to take the book and loose the seven seals thereof? And they searched and they searched and they searched and they searched and they looked, Moses wasn't worthy. Elijah wasn't worthy. Ezekiel wasn't worthy. James and Peter and John wasn't worthy. And no, John wasn't, he was there crying because he, no one was worthy. And John on that Isle Patmos, say, he, the Bible says he began to weep much because no one was worthy to open up the book. Not on earth, not beneath the earth, not in the heavens. No angel was worthy, no disciple was worthy, no prophet was worthy, Moses was not worthy, Elijah wasn't worthy, Elisha wasn't worthy, the prophets of old wasn't worthy, no one was worthy. And they searched and they searched and they searched and finally they couldn't find anyone worthy to open up the book. But wait a minute, John begins to weep. And the Bible says he began to weep much because no one was worthy to open the book. What are we gonna do now? We can't go anywhere, what are we gonna do now? The earth is doomed, what are we gonna do now? We're doomed. And one of the elders walked up and laid his hand upon the shoulder of John. And John is weeping. And one of the elders said, weep not. For the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to, loose, to open the book, loose the seven seals thereof, for he is worthy. And there was a beginning shout, praising God. Let me tell you, friends, Jesus is worthy to open the books, amen. And verse nine says they begin to sing a new song because they, they announced that Jesus Christ was worthy. Worthy to praise God. And that's the highest note, the highest cheer of that song. Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof. And I want you to know Jesus is worthy of our praise and he's worthy of our adoration and he's worthy of heaven and earth. Jesus was slain for us and he's worthy. He's capable, he's powerful enough. He's awesome, he's incredible. He's the first and the last. He's the beginning and the end. The first and the alpha and omega. He's all my Mighty God, he's worthy. And he went to the throne and he took the book out of the hand of he that sit on the throne. And he took that book and opened that book and out came thunderings and lightnings and voices as Jesus opened the book. It's time now for a showdown. The devil has absolutely had it. Amen. Woo! And they said, wait a minute, before we whack the devil all up, let's sing a song. Well, that's not there in fifth chapter, but it, it, it the 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 you know the intention is there. Amen. Amen. Let's before we before we see it all cut to pieces and purged and cleansed out, let's have a song about Jesus. And the Bible says, and they sung a new song, and they cried, Thou art worthy. Amen. I love that first chapter of verse five, where it says, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. The highest note in that song is thou art worthy. Aren't you glad today that you can sit in this room and say, even though I'm not worthy, he's worthy. Even though no one on planet earth is worthy, but Jesus is worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. One day I'll walk the streets of gold because Jesus is worthy. One day I'll live forever and there in that great celestial city and walk by the river of life and there enjoy the sea of glass. One day I'll walk past the, the cherubs and the angels and, and the living creatures crying holy, holy, holy. One day I'll stand before God in that great uh, uh, city clear as crystal and I'll be able to shout it out, worthy, worthy is the lamb, worthy is the son of God, worthy is Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is worthy to conquer all of my sins and all of my doubts and all of my fears. He's worthy. I said he's worthy to conquer and destroy an unworthy devil. And Jesus didn't come to conquer an unworthy human. He came to make that human worthy through his shed blood, amen. 
And the Bible says they sang a song and said, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seven seals thereof, for thou wast slain. Now they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna sing about the crucifixion. They're gonna sing about the death of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Verse nine, the greatest sacrifice, for thou wast slain. Thou art worthy. Then they sing, Thou wast slain. And they're singing about the crucifixion about the greatest sacrifice of all. And we come to church on Wednesday nights and Sunday morning, Sunday night. We gather in revival meetings and tent meetings and camp meetings and we shout glory, he's worthy. And we sing about Jesus Christ offering the greatest sacrifice for our sins on that cross of Calvary. He shed his blood for thou, they sing for thou, speaking of Jesus, was slain. Mmm, sacrifice for you and I. Shed his blood to wash our sins away. What a great song, what a great celebration, what a great uh, a glorification of Jesus Christ. For thou wast slain, crucified, and given life to you and I through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Number three, it, it goes to a sweet story. I mean, a good song will have a sweet story in it. I said a good song will have a sweet story in it. A, a sweet song will have a highest note, worthy is the lamb, the greatest sacrifice, he was slain for our sin, but the sweetest story. Verse nine, and has redeemed us to God by thy blood. Oh, that is so sweet. Jesus, you have redeemed us. You have redeemed us unto God by thy blood. You see, God could have required our blood to be spilled on the ground. God could have required our death, but he didn't. He gave his son Jesus, and his son Jesus took our death, and he was slain. And there being slain, the Bible says he redeemed us to God by thy blood. What a song, amen. I said, what a song. Down here we sing, are you washed in the blood? Up there we sing, thou art worthy, for thou wast slain, and we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And has redeemed us to God by thy blood. Thou hast redeemed us. Then we come to the rich and the widest outreach of this song. Let me know a song ought to reach places. And here's what it says. Not only did he redeem us and he's worthy and he was slain for our sin, but number four, it has the widest reach. It says in verse nine, thou hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation. Makes no difference who you are. Makes no difference the color of your skin. Makes no difference the education of your mind. Makes no difference the, the size or the age or what time frame you lived on planet Earth. Makes no difference what nation you were born in. Makes no difference what uh, country you came from. Makes no difference what uh, language you speak. Makes no difference what, what nationality you are. Thou has redeemed us and washed us and, and redeemed us by his own blood. And by that blood out of every kindred, every tongue, and the Bible says every people and every nation, Jesus Christ has snatched the sinner out of the jaws of death, hell, and the grave and given unto us eternal life. And it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter the time or the frame or the place or the language or the skin color or the nationality. It doesn't matter the custom or whatever it is. Jesus Christ has redeemed us us by his blood out of every people, out of every kindred, out of every nation, Jesus Christ is going to redeem and he is redeeming people from all around the planet. Amen. Isn't that good? Sounds like a worldwide song. A heavenly song. And not only does this song sing about the 
highest note thou art worthy and the greatest sacrifice thou was slain and the sweetest story has redeemed us by his blood and the, and the widest outreach and reaching out to the masses uh, out of every kindred tongue and people and nation he redeemed us by his blood but number five the highest honor the highest honor boy this is a beautiful song the highest honor Amen? Made us, here's what it says in verse 10, Revelation 5, and has made us, and that word made means created us, and has made us unto our God, kings and priests. Isn't that good? He has made us kings and priests. Makes no difference your education. Makes no difference your talents or ability. Makes no difference your physical health. Makes no difference your mental status. Makes no difference your poverty status or rich or poor. Makes no difference who you are. Makes no difference where you've been. You can, you can sit at the Oval White House or drive a garbage truck. It doesn't matter. One day, one day, one day, one day, we shall be kings and priests of God. For Jesus Christ has elevated us from the pit and raised us to the throne room of God. Mm -mm. Don't just sit there and holler. Praise God. Has made us unto God kings and priests. Notice the phrase, made us unto God kings and priests. Now a king and a priest unto the world may not mount to nothing because a king can be poisoned. The king of the earth can be poisoned. A priest of the earth can be so dead wrong. But we're going to be a king and priest of God. Amen? Amen. Hello? Yeah. We're going to be kings and priests and rule and reign on the planet earth. We will be the people in charge one day. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Have you ever wondered why? That the, in the Old Testament, you ever wonder why every time people would meet a king in the Old Testament and say, O king, live forever. O king, live forever. You ever wonder why they always say, O king, live forever. The reason they, the reason they always said to the king, O king, live forever, because they understand that if the king dies, they're going to take all of his servants and all of his masters, all them that work under him, and they're going to kill him too. Boy, I'd be crying, live forever. If I was working for the king, I'd be crying, live forever, live forever, live forever. Well, I got some good news. Our king lives forever. Amen. Amen. And not only does our king live forever, but he's going to let us be king too and priest. Isn't that good? That's a good song. We shall reign on the earth as kings and priests of God. Last but not least, the brightest hope, we shall reign with him. Verse 10, and we shall reign on the earth. I want to read some scripture to you real quickly and then we'll come to a climax of the song. But in verse 11 and 12 of this fifth chapter, and I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and you and you and you and you and you and you. I love them ands in the Bible. Verse 13, and every creature which is in heaven and on earth under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth on the throne, that's our Jesus, and unto the lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts, the living creatures, said amen. And the four and 20 elders fell before the lamb and worshiped him that liveth forever 
and ever. And so here we see, as the climax takes place, and as they begin to shout and glorify God, the angels join in. Amen. The living creatures join in. Everything joins in. Every living creature in the universe. I believe even the stars will join in. Did you know scientists tell us the stars sing? Literally sing. Those, you know them stars, twinkle, twinkle, little star, they sing. Scientists say they have a hum, they sing. Well, you say, what do they sing? Twinkle, twinkle, little star. What do you think they sing? No, they really don't. But anyway, and, and I can't remember where I was at. I think maybe I was in Dallas, Texas. We went to one of them uh, museums and they had a place for scientists and they had each planet of our, of our solar system, each planet. And you'd push a button for Neptune and it would sing a song. You'd push a button for Mars and it would sing a song. You'd push one for Uranus, it would sing a song. You'd push one for uh, Jupiter and it would sing a song. You say, what kind of song? It was, it was incredible. Some kind of buzzing and, and noises and it wasn't static, but it, it was like a, like a hum, like a like humming. And I'm thinking, our God is so incredible that he makes everything join in on the course. Jesus is worthy. The trees, leaves, clap their hands and say, thou art worthy. The water brook begins to bubble down the mountainside, bubbling, saying, thou art worthy. The animals in the kingdom and all around the planet are singing, thou art worthy. Everybody's joined together in the chorus. Angels are joined together. The living creatures are joined together. The four and 20 elders are joined together. Everybody joins together and they sing this song that I'm talking about, Thou Art Worthy. Wow. Now I come to one more place and then we're gonna give an invitation. We know that Jesus did not just begin in Bethlehem. We know that Jesus is the eternal God. We know that Jesus did not just begin. Now, humanly speaking, he began through the Virgin Mary and began some 2,000 years, a little over 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem, you know, physically speaking. But he, he was here long before you and I were. In fact, Jesus was here before Abraham was. In fact, Jesus was here before there was ever any matter, ever any planets, ever any space. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the creator. And so you have to admit that Jesus had to be pretty rich back then. Now he came to earth and became poor so that you and I could be rich, rich in the blessings of God. He came and was humiliated and died so you and I could live forever and have honor and glory in heaven through the blessed shed blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus came, he became poor so that you and I could be rich. He became, he became a servant so that you and I could walk the streets of gold and enjoy the blessings of God. Jesus at one time and, and now, and he always has been, Jesus is a very, let me say this, a very rich God. But when he came to planet Earth, he became a very poor God. He chose to do that because he came to walk among poor people. He came to walk among you and I, and he laid it all aside. Hello? Now, he had all the gold. If he didn't have enough gold, he'd just make more. Jesus has all the power. If he, didn't, if he wanted more power, he'd just make another star that would swallow up our whole solar system one billion times, just one star. The fire raging, the power of God. And so there's a little statement made here in verse 12, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive, to receive power. He, he was slain to receive power. Say, so wait a minute, he already had power. You're right. You say, he was slain to receive power. He was slain to receive riches. He was slain to receive wisdom. He was slain to receive strength. He was slain to receive honor. 
He was slain to receive glory or, uh, and, uh, and the blessing. Well, he already had it, but he came to planet Earth as the Son of God, the Son of Man, God robed in flesh, and he came to get something that you and I possess that he wants. He wants your loyalty. He wants your faithfulness. He wants your commitment. Are you listening to me? He wants you. I said this a while back. I said, when Jesus was on the earth, he never bought a chariot. When Jesus was on the earth, he never bought a house. When Jesus was on the earth, he never bought a camel. He never bought a, a, a you know, a, a chair, never bought, he never bought anything, not a piece of land. When Jesus was on the earth, he never bought anything. In fact, he never, even, he, he never even bought a tomb. He borrowed a tomb when he died. So he never bought anything. He borrowed a grave to be laid in. The only thing Jesus bought was you. The only thing Jesus purchased was his church, was you. Isn't that good? Amen. Now we see he was slain to receive power. Power over us without killing us. Power over us without destroying us. Power over us that we would come to him and make him our Lord. He would not have to crush us or make us do anything. And there's some people in this room, you need to give Jesus power over you. He could squish you like a bug if he wanted to. Are you listening to me? If you're not a Christian, you've never been born again, Jesus can stomp you out like a lit, buttered cigarette and grind it into the ground. Jesus could just squeeze you, stomp you like a bug. He has all the power. Jesus has the power. He could make you get on your hands and knees and bark and cry and beg and squall and crawl to this altar if he wants to. He could. But he wants you to give what little old measly, puny, disgusting power you have that's keeping you from going to church, that's keeping you from reading your Bible, that little old disgusting, puny, tiny, rebellious power you have that's keeping you from coming to God, he wants you to give that to him. Amen. Amen? Come on. He wants you to give that to him. Not only does he want you to give that little power that you have to him, because he could take it, he could destroy you. He wants you to give everything you have to him. He wants what little riches you think you have, he wants you to give to him. He wants you to give what little bit of wisdom you think you have, and honestly, I said, what little bit, little, little bit of wisdom we think we have. Let me just say this. We're a bunch of idiots. Amen. Now, don't get mad at me. I said, we are a bunch of idiots. And the only smart people I know are people that have repented of their sins and came to Jesus Christ. And God wants every, all the strength that we have. He wants honor given to him and glory and blessing given to him. You say, I don't believe that. Well, what about the greatest commandment of all? That's, uh, remember, you're to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love thy neighbor as thyself. Those two commandments, all the law of the prophet hinges on, all the Ten Commandments, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. Kind of, that's kind of what that verse is saying. You give your strength, you give everything you have, you give your puny wisdom, you give your honor to Jesus and glory and blessing, and Jesus wants to take that because he's worthy. You say, why is he worthy? He's worthy because he was slain. He shed his blood for you and I. He's worthy because he paid the ultimate price for you and I to go to heaven. Worthy is the lamb. Josh is gonna come and bring a song. And we wanna join into that song and we wanna praise God and understand with all the being we have, give God the worthy 
Praise that he deserves. He's worthy of all of our praise. I'm glad you came to church tonight because Jesus was worthy that you came. That don't mean you were worthy. It means Jesus was worthy for us to come. What little bit we can add, we ought to add, because all of the universe joins together. Amen? Amen? I believe all the creation, I believe the fish in the water, praise God. I believe the grass praises God. I believe everything praises God. The sound of the stars, the sound of the planets, the water brooks, the wind in the treetops, the leaves rustling, everything gets praise to God. And so the devil wants to make clamor and noise in our lives so the song will be interrupted to God. And that's why we need to give God praise and worship him. Stand with me. Can you sing? Can you sing and give God praise? See, God loves for you to sing to him and sing about him.